So within the Blackfish, we really made the decision to go to Japan and go to Taji, uh, where the dolphin hunts happened every year, to um, be able to focus and bring to the attention the link that the Taji and other dolphin hunts have to the dolphinarium trades that groups like ours campaign against uh, in, in Europe. And really, um, Taji, there's about 2,000 animals get killed every year, and we really, you know, we know that a lot of the, that like, you know, a, a certain amount of these animals end up being selected, taken taken away from their family mem members that then get slaughtered, and they're being put in separate pens before they're transported um, around the world to whoever, you know, what, uh, pays the money. Um, really, our aim was to take direct action at Taji to try and, uh, uh, as best as we could, um, try and release dolphins, um, and at the same time, you know, um, let the world know and let people know about about this link. Yeah. So the action we actually did was uh, we had a, a team of people went to uh, went to Taji. They did uh, about two to three weeks of surveillance. They were there uh, most nights. They um, pretty much worked on the cover. They didn't have much contact with anybody else there. Um, and really to try and estimate, you know, the amount of dolphins going in these pens uh, when they're transported and keeping logs of this. And there was one moment where um, the security guard and fishermen that are supposed to guard uh, these pens that left. And the reason was because the weather uh, one night was getting so bad. Uh, there was a thunderstorm, lots of lightning, very, very heavy rainfall. Um, and this was for us a really good opportunity to you know, try and try and uh, cut the nets around these pens, and that was kind of what we decided to do. So some of our divers went in the water; they swam into the bay where um, these pens, uh, these sort of cages, are are kept. Uh, and six of the holding pens that we estimated had around had 18 dolphins in them at the time. We cut very big uh, holes in these nets um, to really give the best possible chance for these dolphins uh, to swim out. But well, the interesting thing about uh, your opinion of Japanese people about things not only uh, around Taji but also around whaling is that a lot of these issues are not very known. Um, the media pretty much in, in Japan has so far kept a pretty good lid on these, on these kind of stories. And actually more and more is coming out. Our story also received quite a bit of uh, uh, attention from, from the mainstream Japanese media, which is actually quite surprising. Um, so I think... A lot of uh, there's quite some organizations that do very good work in Japan to try and raise awareness, you know, among the Japanese public, and that's very, very important because, you know, ultimately change will come from from within Japan as well as uh, due to outside pressure. So um, a lot of people in in Japan don't really just know about what's happening in Taiji, um, and that's one of the reasons why I think, besides raising awareness uh, through like public awareness raising and, and public events. It's really important to take direct action to make sure that the media, you know, takes takes this issue on board. Yeah, we did what we could. We cut the nets, and it wasn't pitch black, and it wasn't during a storm, and it was, you know, in the middle of the night. Um, we didn't stick around to check whether dolphins actually, you know, swam out. I think this is also an important thing. We really focused on the release efforts to have the best possible chance of us going in, cutting the nets, doing our thing, you know, allowing the dolphins to uh, to leave, um, but then also to to get out of there again. So um, some people, you know, question us like, well, you know, what about, you know, did dolphins leave or not? But the point is, you know, we claim to have cut the nets, and that's what we did. And um, as far as we know, we gave the best possible chance for these dolphins uh, to to swim out back out into sea. We did go to Taji with the intention of freeing dolphins, cutting nets, taking direct action to put again this sense of slaughter on 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 the map of of media, but also of of other other activists. I think. There's a lot of issues that, that happen around the world, and I think it's really important to see in Taiji that there's more organizations getting involved, that Sea Shepherd, for example, has, has a presence now at the Cove and makes daily reports of what happens there, which is very important you know, for other people to realize what's going on. Um, Rico Berry, with his organization Save Japan Dolphins, is, is raising public awareness around the Japanese public in some of the bigger cities and other locations, and that's really important too, and I think all these different approaches uh, really help. Um, yeah, so I think that's uh, that's a, a very important thing. Although we went there because we wanted to take direct action, we also know that it's part of a bigger movement of people to push for this uh, dolphin slaughter to end. 
Well, cutting the nets might be illegal. I think it is a far, far bigger crime uh, what's happening to these dolphins in Taji. Um, we're talking about 20,000 dolphins that are slaughtered every year for their meat. A lot of these dolphins end up in the dolphinarium trade. That is the crime. The crime that is committed is against these beings, these animals, that will end up, you know, their lives either as packed meat or they'll end up their entire lives to work, it, you know, to entertain humans. And I think this is another really, really important thing is that people need to understand that what happening in Taji has very close links with the dolphinariums uh, that people may visit, you know, nearby in their own, you know, in their own locality. Places like SeaWorld, places like dolphinariums around Europe, places like that have resorts where aquariums are kept or other animals. But most of these animals in aquariums come from the wild. These are wild animals. They don't belong there. Um, so I think that's very important that, you know, that people make that link. If people see the cove, they need to understand that a lot of this industry also relies on animals being taken to places near, you know, near where you live. Uh, and, you know, where maybe before you were thinking of taking your children to for like a day out. You know, people need to understand the, 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 the kind of, yeah, the links, the consequences of, of, of the things they're supporting closer to home.